This is going to be easier than I feared. <laughs> so, as he just said, my name is Peter Tennant, and I'm another victim of PhD from <laughs> Newcastle University. Or, to use our new international name, the Central University of Newcastle upon Tyne. <laughs> I'll give this to our PR team. It's certainly a memorable acronym. I'm told it was chosen. <laughs> I'm told it was chosen specifically to increase our visibility amongst international students. <laughs> Which, on reflection, I guess, is because students spend so much time on the internet searching for such words. <laughs> you see, that's why I love Newcastle. You come to a thinking person's comedy night, and you're still guaranteed a laugh from a cheap cunt joke. <laughs> Which is just as well, really. Because I'm afraid the rest of my material ain't so good. You see, unlike Emily, with her pant pressing Geordies, <laughs> the content of my research does not lend itself to comedy. I actually once applied for a PhD that would have involved staring down on a microscope at the dissected blade brains of a thousand and one fruit flies. <laughs> mm. Compared to my topic, comedy gold. <laughs> I would talk to you more generally about my job, but I'm a statistician. <laughs> reaction I usually get, I have to say, it's not something I'd usually want to admit in public. In fairness to myself, I'm actually something called an epidemiologist. Oh. <laughs> Someone has a clue what that means, do they? <laughs> usually when I use it, you do get a blank expression. It's pretty similar when I say I'm a statistician. But they know what it means. They're just now entirely focused on planning their escape. <laughs> yeah, so a statistician. Right. I just realized my tie's on the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> With epidemiology, it's genuine gormous. <laughs> Usually disguised by one of those fake knowing knots. Interesting. <laughs> you have no idea what that means, do you? No. Um, skin, right? No, it is not to do with a fucking skin. <laughs> dermatology is the study of skin. Sometimes I think it would probably be easier to retrain as a dermatologist. And I keep having to explain to everyone that, you know, alas, I'm afraid I don't know the best way to get rid of cellulite. <laughs> <laughs> so, when I'm asked to describe epidemiology, I usually say it's like being a detective. I'm lying, of course. <laughs> but it briefly makes me feel cool and important instead of a massive geek. You see, epidemiology sits rather awkwardly between the hard sciences like biology. And, 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 and the other stuff, the, the, the parenthesis stuff we heard about earlier. Um, so, at the far end of biomedical research, you have the biologists. who spend their time creating terrifying mutant rats. Yes. <laughs> I may have sexed that up a little bit, but in fact, these people spend their time looking at dissected fly brains, so you're going to give me a little bit of room for an artistic license. So next step down, you have the clinical trials, which are quite similar, actually. Uh, hopefully, than uh, rats. Hopefully, our participants are not quite as hairy. Though, I have to say, towards the end of November, it can be difficult to tell. 
one of the problems you have with working with people is that kind of stops you putting everyone in cages. <laughs> so, but usually, as long as you start with two groups that are fairly similar to begin with, then things should be all right. With epidemiology, we don't have the luxury of controlling people. We just have to observe in their natural habitat. <laughs> so, let's say we're looking at a coffee. We can't get 100 people give 50 of them unlimited access to delicious cappuccino, and then the other 50 have to have some kind of control, like celery juice. <laughs> Interesting, because that may sound, especially if you then put them all in a cage with a coffee cup in the middle and watch them fight it out. <laughs> so, that's where statistics comes in. Basically like a large magic wand. But actually, it's more like a really boring calculator where you can't even amuse yourself by making rude words out of upside down numbers. <laughs> and the truth is, the, the power of statistics has been greatly exaggerated. I have to say, for me personally, one of the most annoying things about being a statistician is people saying to me, Ah, you can use statistics to prove anything. One tiny little myth. And I'm basically a permanent source of disappointment. <laughs> so, back to my research topic. Not something I would usually talk about in polite company. Although actually, from what I've seen from you guys this evening, I guess I'm okay, so... I'll give you a clue, it's to do with pregnancy. Obesity in pregnancy, actually. At this stage, I was tempted to make a bunch of fat pregnant jokes. But at some point in the future, I would also like to be able to obtain funding. Those <laughs> options around. Besides, pregnant women have already had it hard enough. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let me down. <laughs> Has anyone seen a list of things that pregnant women are advised to avoid? Cling film, shampoo, frying pans. <laughs> Admittedly, that last one to me seemed a little bit obvious. But I guess if you've never been whacked in the face by one, no. <laughs> so, obesity in pregnancy, that's my... That's my risk factor, the outcome. Not something I'd usually talk about. However, it can occasionally have its uses in impolite company. I once had a ride, or quite recently had a ride, with one of those really annoying taxi drivers. You know, the ones who just talk. <laughs> and for some reason, he didn't like students. And he wasn't afraid to say it. So I'm sat in the back of his car, and he turns to me and he says, I fucking hate students. I just want to run them all down. <laughs> it was a bit weird. I mean, I was obviously a student. I like to think in that light, possibly even an undergraduate. <laughs> Anyway, he continued. Why don't they just go out and get a proper fucking job? What do you do anyway? <laughs> First instinct, I'm a statistician. <laughs> if he kept talking, I could then bombard him with fascinating stories about probability distributions. <laughs> but on this occasion, I thought I'd bring out the big guns. <laughs> I composed myself. <laughs> I took a deep breath. And I said, Who? Oh, me? Well, I study the causes of stillbirth and infant death. <laughs> he didn't say another word. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Audience. If anyone has any questions about statistics, 
Please don't ask me. That's why God invented the internet. Well, that and searching for pictures of the Central University of Newcastle. <laughs> 